Hey everyone, welcome back to the next episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and in this episode we are, as always, going to continue on with our Conway's Game of Life. Uh, we are now on part 10. Wow. I did not intend on this being such a long series. But you know what? We are learning a lot of great things in this series. We are, we are learning some I.O. We are learning some... Uh, some I.O. <laughs> seriously, guys. Uh, in this one, we're going to learn something brand new that uh, we have not used at all in any of the series that I've created. So, in order for one class to communicate with another, it's easy to do, right? You just create a reference uh, to that class in your um, other class and assign that class to that class, and then you have crossed class you know, capabilities. It's kind of cumbersome. Um, there, there is a, an easier way to do this, and that is through events. So we're going to be using, in this tutorial, we're going to be using events, or sorry, uh, Unity's Event Manager class. Or, or they don't even actually have, it is, yes, Event Manager. Sorry. And that's not even, I don't know if that's a Unity thing or not. Um, I'm thinking that it's actually a uh, C-sharp thing. Could be wrong. But, in either case, nope, it's Unity's, sorry. I, I, I kind of just looked ahead here. So... Uh, with this event manager, where it's basically going to tie together our uh, save and load dialog boxes with our game uh, class. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to create, of course, a new script. Look at that, our scripts folder is starting to get full of stuff. So, C sharp script. And we're going to call this event manager. And let's open that puppy up. So, in our event manager, we are not going to need start. We're not going to need update. We will need Unity Engine. We're also going to need Unity Engine events. And that should be it. <clears throat> so that's it, we're done. Nope. We need to do a little more work here. <laughs> So uh, we need to create a, uh, a place, a storage, to store all of our events, okay? And uh, you know what, before we even get into that, let's create our, our methods, okay? The first one we're going to create is the start listening method. So that's going to be public static void start listening. And we're going to pass in two parameters. One is going to be the event name. And the other is going to be a unity action, and that is going to be the listener. Okay. The next method is going to be stop listening, because as far as events are concerned, um, there is there comes a time when we want to stop listening for event messages. So the same thing here, we're going to give it the event name and the listener. And finally, we're going to create the trigger event method. And here we're just going to pass in the event name. Okay. So, as far as events go, uh, we need a way to store all of these events. And the best way to do that is to just use a dictionary. Okay, so we'll use dictionary. And the dictionary is going to be a string and unity event. And that's basically going to um, hold all of the events that we generate. And oddly enough, we're going to call this the event dictionary. And then we're going to need a, uh, a reference to the event manager. So that's going to be private static event manager event manager. And we are going to create an instance of Event Manager. And the way that we do that is by using a method. Event Manager instance. Okay. And we're going to do a get. And in here we're going to say if not Event Manager. Uh, 
event manager, and that's basically going to create a singleton. Find object of type, type of event manager as event manager. Uh, hang on. If not event manager. There. And then that is going to be event manager of the class, not the instance. And that should be good. Oh, and this should be the instance, not the class. There. So then if not event manager, then we debug dot log error. And this is basically to tell us that there needs to be one active event manager script on a game object in your scene. This is just a reminder that uh, to actually add the event manager to one of the game objects in our um, scene. We then um, go into an else statement and uh, we're going to call event manager.init um, which we still need to create. And from here we are going to return event manager. Oh, this is why I'm getting so many errors. It's because I spelled manager wrong there. Now they're all fixed. Right? Save. It'll fix itself. Um, we need to create that initialization class. So in here we're going to do void init. And we're going to say here if event dictionary equals null, then we're going to initialize our event dictionary. So event dictionary equals new dictionary string and unity event. Okay. Um, so that's that. So let's go ahead and work on our um, start listening method here. So what we're going to do is we're going to initialize a new Unity event. And we'll just call it this event. And that's going to equal null to begin with. So what we'll do is we'll say if instance dot event dictionary dot try get value event name, whoops, and out this event. So basically what we're doing is we're telling it, hang on, this event, add listener, listener, there, and then we're going to an else statement, and this event equals new unity event, this event, add listener, listener, and instance dot event dictionary, dot add event name, this event. So now we're adding it to the dictionary. So what happens here is we take instance, right, which is the initialization of event manager here. And we say um, the event dictionary, right, which is part of this. Um, yep, in here. And um, we basically uh, tell it to try and get the value of the event name. And then we set that to this event. And then we add the listener to this event to add a listener. If we don't, if we can't get the value, then what will happen is, is we create a new event and then we add the listener to that new event and then we set the uh, event name and this event equal or to the event dictionary. And with our uh, stop, 
listening, but even simpler, we just go into event manager. We set that to null. Well, we ask it if it's null, right? And if it is, then we just return. If it's not, then we do a unity event. Um, and we'll just call it this event. We'll set that to null. And if instance dot event dictionary dot try get value event name and out this event we set this event dot remove listener listener and that is that finally we're going to go into here and we're going to do unity event this event equals null this is the trigger of the event if instance dot event dictionary dot try get value event name out this event this event dot invoke okay so that should be that. Uh, I don't know why I'm still getting red squigglies. Maybe we have to just close it and open it back up. Yep, okay. So it was just not a, oh wait, damn it. <laughs> ah, it's spelled wrong here. Event manager, event manager, event, manager event manager the hell okay so that's fixed um yeah most coding errors are due to misspellings or forgotten semicolons or closing curly brackets somewhere so whenever you do troubleshooting that's where you should start make sure everything is spelled correctly <laughs> um we have everything now to start utilizing this event manager class. And to use it, it's really, really simple. Um, we're going to close this. We're going to, first of all, add event manager to our game object uh, component, or object, game object object, <laughs> our game object, our game game object. There we go. Uh, so we've got event manager, put that up here. And now uh, we can go in to, let's start with our save dialog. And we're gonna go in here. And this is really, really simple. I think you guys will really love this. So if we go to save pattern, right? The only line of code we need to add in here is event manager dot trigger event save pattern so what we're doing here is we're telling our event manager that we want to trigger an event and the event name is going to be save pattern so in the class that's going to execute the code for that we need to be listening for that event and if that event is triggered we call a method so we're going to do the same thing in the load dialog. So in the load dialog, we're just going to come down here to where it says load pattern. We're going to make an extra line. And then we're going to type event manager, trigger event, we're going to give it a name, load pattern. Okay. So now in the class that is going to be listening for these events, we're going to go into game, into the game class. So in the game class, what we'll need to do is in the start method, we need to add a couple of things. One, we're going to add event manager dot start listening. And we're going to say save pattern, which is the event name. And then the action is going to be save pattern. As far as the uh, other one goes, event manager, start listening. 
load pattern. Remember, that's the name of the event. And then we're just going to do load pattern. So the difference now is that we need to um, we need to be able to actually load the name that is uh, used by our um, by our dropdown, right? So we select one from the dropdown. We don't want to just use this test.xml. So what we'll do is we'll add another line and we'll create a variable called uh, pattern name. And we're going to get that name from HUD.load dialog pattern name, which is a property that we made public in the load dialog. We're going to go dot options, right? Pattern name is the uh, the dropdown, and the dropdown has a property called options, and that we can specify HUD.load dialog dot pattern name dot value, and then we want the text value of that. Okay, that should be simple enough. Um, now what we'll do is we've already got our path here and uh, we've already got patterns as part of the path. So now all we need to do is we need to add, um, actually, yeah, let's add the slash. We'll need that. And then we also need to add, um, actually, let's do this here. To make it a little easier, path equals path plus slash plus pattern name plus. Remember, we have to add the uh, extension back in .xml. So this should work. Okay. Before we start using that, we want to go ahead and also. Um, fix the save one because we also have to tell it what name we want to use for save, right? So let's go down here to save pattern and again where we've got our uh, static string here for our stream writer, what we're going to do is instead of that we're going to do our path plus the slash okay, plus whoa. And this will be pattern name. Well, we still have to create pattern name, don't we? So the pattern name is just going to be the HUD dot save dialog dot pattern name dot text. That'll give us the value of that. And then we just need to add dot XML at the end. And that should take care of that. Right? Seems easy enough. So we'll save that. And we'll come in here and see what happens. Hopefully it all works. So first of all, let's uh, mess this up a little bit. And the test one is going to be different anyways, I think. So we'll do load. I'll do test. Yep, that's that one. Let's try that again. Um, actually, let's save this as cool pattern. What is happening? Oh, we still have to disable the L and S buttons. Okay. So let's do this again. Save. Cool P. All right, that works. But that is causing an error. HUD.SaveDialog.PatternName. I'm guessing that that's not set to an instance of an object. Dun, 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 dun. That doesn't make any sense. Why would that not be set to an instance of an object? HUD. Save dialog is set to an instance, right? This this is the property, this is the game object that is set to that, and then it creates the instance when it starts. Save, test, did we just load up another? All right, um, let's try this again, save. 
Yeah, object reference not set to an instance of an object on line 143. And that leads us to here. I have a suspicion. No, this this is wait 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 wait. Um, I'm I've got a thought. So if we stop and go into save dialog, pattern name. We never assigned the stupid input, so we got to drag the input box into pattern name. Okay. So let's try that again. So we'll press save and then uh, just give it a T and press save. And this looks like it did it. So now if we load, hey look, there's T and test. So we can load this one. Or we can load T. Now, yeah, okay. So test actually looks different. So let's get rid of that. Save this as a, B, C, and yeah, B because it built. All right, so we need to disable all the inputs. Or, um, yeah, we need to disable all the inputs. This is stupid. So let's come back to here and go into the game class. And as far as inputs go, we disable all of these when the HUD is active. So only when the HUD is not active do we allow any user input to um, either bring up the load dialog, bo uh, dialog box, the save dialog box, the build, uh, pause, all of that can only happen if the HUD is not active. So let's save that. So now we could properly name it we save. So let's do this. Let's add something here. Save that. Super cool pattern. Save. It says it's saved. Load. Super cool pattern. ABC. Looks like that. Super cool pattern, looks like that. Build, there we go. It's interesting. Pause, load up, test, build. Okay, so event manager is looking pretty good. It uh, actually solved all of our problems. And you know, just kind of as a recap, um, the way that the event manager works is it, uh, you know, we've got this load dialog box, for instance, here. We just call the event manager class and we trigger an event, okay? We call that event load pattern. So in one class, you could be, it could be totally disassociated from anything else. You could just call load pattern. And then event manager, wherever you have your listener specified to listen for that load pattern name, like if I trigger that event, then the event manager is going to say, hey, this event's been triggered, and it's going to send it to whatever class has got the listener set up, okay? So that listen for event that we did in the game, which is right here, event manager start listening. We're listening for this save pattern, load pattern, and if the event manager sends us a message saying, hey, uh, this has been triggered, then we want to perform this action, which the action is literally the method. So that is that that's creating the event manager and actually using it in unity which is pretty cool uh actually worked out well for our project um we could have done it another way which would have been a little more cumbersome but you know like i said there's always more than one way to do anything when you're programming it's all about solving problems and um you know finding solutions to things that you need to find solutions for the problems so uh, that's literally what programming is all about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, we are going to, in the next one, the next one, uh, man, the next one is going to be, we're getting close to the end here. 
Um, I think the next one should probably be uh, WebGL, because there's literally nothing left. We can save, we can load. We've ironed out all the bugs with, you know, making sure that we don't do anything in the editor while we have our HUD up. Uh, we can save, load, I've already said that probably. Um, yeah, so the only other part is actually getting this set up with uh, WebGL. And that part's a little different also uh, because we're going to look at using the uh, some of the networking components that Unity has in order to submit XML HTTP requests to a server running PHP. And uh, yeah, that's going to be fun um, because it's something totally new and everyone likes new things, right? So anyways, again, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, comments go down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That's very important to me. Also, check out my Patreon. Patrons are super awesome. I welcome any and all donations all the time. Uh, you guys are awesome. I, I thank you so much for all of the uh, contributions that you've made so far. And I will see you guys in the next one.